Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, who are you? Who the heck are you? If you're in business or thinking about being in business, stay tuned to this episode, watch the episode, listen to the episode, enjoy it, let it soak in, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? Uh, If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you dig it, and it's better than a uh, cat video. Uh, Watch. We got out 220 stinking episodes. It's been going on for four flipping years. By the way, if you haven't listened, you're new, and you've only been listening to the past few, go catch up. The first ones are really bad, so it's always fun to watch. Uh, By the way, if you have a favorite episode and you're watching on YouTube, comment which episode was actually your favorite or what topic you want to hear. Because after four years, uh, I would love to hear from you guys what topic you want to add. Please do. That would be absolutely awesome. Give the video a thumbs up if you're on YouTube. And more importantly, buy your supplies through me. Shameless plug. (sighs) No, I am a window cleaning uh, resource rep for windowcleaner.com. And uh, that's what I do. I put orders in for people. I help people choose what they need to choose. Questions on products, bids, all that fun stuff. I am your guy. I promise. Uh, My number direct, 862-312-2026. Now, hundreds and hundreds of you have saved that number in your phone, and that's absolutely epic. Thank you. Um, but if you haven't yet saved that number, I want to be your rep for absolutely everything. Let me put your orders in. Uh, that's what I do. And another shameless plug, because why not? If you are in the industry and you have not gotten the American window cleaner magazine, please do that. Do that right now. Do it this week. Uh, by the way, there is a special that's going on that will be ending soon. You actually get a bunch of sticker packs if you order right now. If you haven't seen uh, the sticker sheets, uh, these are sticker sheets. Every single issue, if you're on YouTube, check it out. If you're not, go to YouTube and you can see the pictures. You can see the stickers behind me. You can see all that. But these are sticker sheets. One of these comes in every single issue. This is how it comes, by the way. Uh, Wrapped in nice clear plastic with a sticker sheet in there. To your door every single month without fail. And there's absolutely awesome stuff in there. Pictures, there's posters, there's, there's a ton. And get the stickers. Look at the sticker sheet behind me. By the way, my sticker board is looking pretty good. I got some more space over here, but we're getting there. And I I hid behind my head, but anyway, we're getting there eventually. So go to uh, awcmag.com. That is the website for the magazine. Get the subscription. Call me for your supplies. Do all that. It's like a super virtual high five of awesomeness. And please be awesome. More importantly, be epic, right? Anyway, okay. So today we're talking about who are you? Now, we've talked about this kind of thing before, and it shocks me every single time that people are so confused on who they are. Like, if you have a business, you have to know who you are. Now, the big businesses, they actually write it out. They actually put it all out there for what they uh, are, who they are. They put it all out there. And... They have like an an avatar of who they are. They have an avatar of who their customer is. They know through and through. Coca-Cola knows who they are. From everything from their color, which, what's the color of Coca-Cola? Not the color of the soda, but their marketing color, their branding color. Yeah, it's red, red and white. They know from what works. They know for what feeling they're trying to produce. Right? That warm and fuzzy, hey, here's a polar bear drinking a... Right? They do all of that. They know it all. And it's on a sheet of paper and they have it in a in a one sentence thing of who they are. Now, with small business, a lot of us, we don't do that. And the big thing is, is that we kind of feel like it's not something that we need to do. Uh, sorry, I'm adjusting my, my thirds here on the camera, but... A lot of us don't feel like we have to do that because we are a small business, but I'm here to tell you, you have to know who you are in order to sell people, in order to convey a message to people, in order to have your branding work. How do you advertise to somebody when you don't know what you're advertising? 
If you don't know who you're advertising to, your avatar, by the way, if you don't know, we've talked about that a bunch, customer avatar. But if you don't know who you're selling to, not just, oh, people with windows, because you know, people in condos aren't going to buy you, or people in apartments aren't going to buy your services, people who are, you know, uh, 20 years old aren't going to buy, like, you have to have a specific category, you have to know who you are. And a lot of us don't know it, it's like, there's so many things in small business that just are too big, right? Like, we're like, ah, I don't need that, I'm not a big business, I'm just a small business. And unfortunately, that's one of them. So that's what we're talking about today is who are you? Because you have to know this. By the way, again, if you're on YouTube, um, go ahead and comment, thumbs up, do all that stuff. I want to see a billion comments. But comment who you are. If you know your USP or who you are, tell us. Even in generalities. We're the company that blah, blah, blah. Tell me because I want to hear. Anyway, so what is your brand? First off and first First and foremost, you have to understand that everybody's brand is going to be different. A window cleaning company is not just a window cleaning company. There's lots of window cleaning companies, right? I'm going to say a word. Some of you work here. Um, most of you know who they are, but Fish. As soon as I said that name, you instantly saw the logo, the color scheme, what the employees wear, the color of their buckets and handles. You also know what kind of company they are, right? Oh, they're low bidders. They're out there doing it for uh, 50 cents a pain. There's a lot of things that come out there, but that is their brand. What they are trying to do is be everywhere and pick up as much work as possible. That's who they are, right? So every company has a who they are. They are not going to be necessarily who you are. And you also know who's in your area that is just ridiculously expensive luxury you know, services and everything else, they're not who you are either, maybe. Maybe you're in the middle. Maybe you are on the top end. Maybe you are on the low end. But you have to know who you are. And the big thing, first and foremost, is who are you brand-wise? What's your brand? Your brand is what they see and feel with you. What's your brand? Are your logos the same? Color schemes the same? If your envelopes have a blue swoosh on it, do your uniforms have a blue swoosh on it? Does your website have a blue swoosh on it? You have to be across the platforms. You have to understand what your brand is. Now, think of Clorox as a brand, right? What do they stand for? What is their brand? Clorox. Well, they do a lot of stuff. They're owned by one of the largest chemical companies. But Clorox, that name, that brand, you already know, right? Bleach, disinfectant, right? That's what they do. So guess what? Everything that they do is all white. Their commercials are whitewashed and white and this and evidence this hospital, sterile, clean. That's their brand. If they came out with a Clorox gutter cleaning... That really wouldn't work real well. Because people are like, well, why am I using Clorox and gutters? I don't care. I just want them, right? They have to understand what their brand is in order to sell it. Same thing with us. If your brand is exterior services, well, then it doesn't really make sense that you organize garages. It doesn't make sense that maybe you detail cars. What's your brand? A brand has to be quick and has to be something people can understand. Think about a brand of any other company and you will get that, right? No one looks at McDonald's. And, and by the way, I use these big companies just because everybody knows them. But it doesn't matter what your brand is. There is a market for what you sell. We're a luxury business. But if your brand is to help the common person, then you have to work on that brand. If your brand is to be luxury services, then you have to push that brand, fix that brand, find that brand, right? McDonald's exists, and not one person in all of the world thinks of McDonald's and first and foremost goes quality. Oh, man. The staff at McDonald's are just the most amazing. Their, their, their restaurants are always clean, and their food, mm, bon appetit. Quality food is what comes to mind. That's not their brand. That's not their brand. Now, they've changed brands. Back when I was a kid, their brand was actually kids. This is a kid's restaurant, right? Pl 
Playland, Grimace, the Fry Guy, Hamburglar. They had all those cartoon characters, right? Their buildings looked like it. Happy Meals were the focus. That was everything. And then they said, well, that's nice for kids, but what if we could brand to everybody? And they switched it. Do you remember the, the Mick Arch? And they had this one, they had a commercial way back in the day uh, that Ronald McDonald was at a club with a bunch of other people that were in their, you know, mid-20s or whatever. They tried to rebrand what they were. It didn't work. It didn't work real well. What they did find is a sweet spot in having still kids and focused on kids, but also focused on something that the parents actually don't mind going to take the kids there. Right, so now you see salads on the menu and a little bit more adult options, but yet in a calmer area, you know, they're going just to people with kids. Now, that's what their brand is. You don't go to if 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 McDonald's right now came out with the mixed steak and it was a T bone, not one person anywhere would be like, mm, man, I can't wait to sink my my mouth into that delicious quality steak that McDonald's has. No. A mixed steak wouldn't go over well because they're not known for quality. People assume steak with quality. So what do they do? Burgers. They do fried chicken, chicken nuggets, chicken strips, right? It's the reason that like certain things didn't make real well. There was McPizza. Uh, If you don't remember that, I think that was also in uh, Canada, possibly. If you're in Canada, tell me. Uh, That may have been just a trial thing too. Uh, But they also had alcohol for a while. Actually, again, Canada, maybe. But all of these things that didn't really work because that's not their brand. Understand your brand and you understand what you offer, who you're offering to, what people are finding you, and you can take the entire company as a whole and make it a brand. You're little. I can say that because even the biggest companies doing $3 million a year, it's still little and you're still a small business, right? It does not matter if you're big or small, you need to have a brand because you understand yourself. If you can understand who you are, you can sell what you are better. 100%. Here's another one. What does your site say? What does your website say? Now, other than referrals, I'm talking about actual advertising. By the way, for everybody who ever wants to argue me about this, referrals is not advertising. That's somebody purposely telling somebody else. It's not advertising is something you do in order to get new customers. Referrals are not that. So when I say this is the number one way that you will get business, it's advertising. Number one way of advertising is going to be your website. Now, with websites, and I've talked a lot about this. You guys send me websites all the time. Um, That's super, super, super awesome. I've seen just this week probably... Uh, 12 or 13 different websites from people say, hey, check this out. Tell me what you want. By the way, uh, let me put this out there that I'm not a yes man. For everybody who did send me your site, I always kind of preface that. You guys understand. Um, but if you ever do send me something, I will never, ever, ever be like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing. Pat on the back. Good job. Because that's not constructive. That's not. The thing is, is that if you look for something, you know what's good on your site. I'll tell you what's good on your site, but I'm going to find things wrong with it. I'm going to tell you the things that I don't like about the site because that's how you change things. If you actually want to send uh, a site in or something to to look at, shoot me a text. uh, 862-312-2026. I'll definitely look at it, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, And if you really want to change things and make it better, then definitely let me know. But what does your site say about you? I look at hundreds of websites a year. From people and there's a theme out there where people do the the work themselves and sometimes it does not convey the right message right there's certain things that have to happen in websites go look at a professional website every single time it is absolutely uniform top to bottom it is going off of a center line in there now i see some people who the text is up here down here it's over here and it's hodgepodge the pictures don't match the You know, there's always pixel issues. Everybody's got pixel issues when pictures are putting up there. Uh, Logos and things are maybe outdated and and, and old. And and, uh, there's text issues. Have text kind of match up, line up. If you have a brand, your website reflects the brand. Go to Coca-Cola's website. Go to McDonald's' website. As soon as you get on their site, boom, it's their brand. I'm not talking about a logo because that's on there too. I'm talking about their brand. The feeling they want you to feel when you look at their company. It's all there. Same thing with websites. 
If you're going to find somebody to do websites, make sure that they understand that. Make sure that they do websites for our industry. A website can look relatively close to another website as far as design or layout or any of that stuff. But that doesn't matter because it's nationwide. There is no nationwide. It doesn't matter. What they need it to is convey the message you're trying to say. Uh, I've said it a thousand times, by the way. Just a monk, monk SEO, phenomenal, phenomenal guy. Um, I keep sending him messages uh, and talking back and forth about creating packages and things like that. So there may be a WCR package uh, to hopefully save you guys money there. But I've used him on a bunch of my projects, a bunch of projects, and they are absolutely amazing. But finding a company like that helps that whole website. If you do something yourself, my first website I did myself, it was so awesome. I was so happy, man. I did this myself, pat on the back. I showed my wife and she's like, huh. I'm like, what? She went over everything and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I was so busy looking at this thing that I made, I didn't really see it. It's the same thing when people do EDDM, they put together an EDDM flyer or project and then they're unhappy. They think it's amazing, but it doesn't translate, right? What does your site say? Make sure that you're crossing all of the, the, the lines with the exact same logo, style, header, anything. If you're there and you're not happy with the text, you're not happy with your logo, you're not happy with any of that stuff, go ahead and rebrand. Change it. Update it. Everybody's done that. McDonald's. Go back to them. They've done that. They've rebranded. Right? Update things because... Sometimes, if a website is not up to par, which again, not any of you guys have talked to me um, are not up to par, but you know what I'm saying. If your website sucks, then it does not sell anything, it doesn't do anything, and it doesn't bring in any new work. Why have a website if it sucks? More importantly, why have a website if nobody finds it? Again, SEO, super, super important. We're not talking about that. Again, uh, SEO stuff. But there's something about a snapshot, and I'm going to tell you kind of what an idea of a snapshot is. Now, a brand is the whole thing when you step back and you look at it. But a snapshot is that any time throughout a day, somebody, say a paparazzi, could be taking pictures of your guys in the trucks, doing work, doing whatever, just taking random pictures. Do those pictures all look alike? Do they all speak the same message? Does guy one and guy two in the truck look like each other as far as what they're wearing, how they're wearing it? Or does one guy have black jeans on and the other guy's got uh, uh, short board shorts on and one guy's wearing sandals and they're, but they both got shirts on. One guy's got a big stain on it. The other guy's got a collared shirt. What is a snapshot? A snapshot is at any point your company could be looked at through a lens. That's your offices. That's your trucks. That's the uh, documents you give and the papers. Is any snapshot at any time, anybody at any point, does it all look the same? Now, let me tell you something. When models are out there and they're getting pictures, they will only allow pictures when they're ready to take the picture, right? When a model's there, they kind of do their thing and then they pose, right? The thing with paparazzi, why paparazzi uh, make money doing what they do is because they take awful pictures. They take pictures when you're not knowing people are taking pictures. That's a snapshot. A snapshot is what it looks like at any one time. That's what it is. What's the snapshot of your company? How are you conveying? How does at any time somebody look out the window and the neighbors and they see you, what are you conveying to them? This is one thing that people kind of miss. They just look at an individual. Well, you look good. You look put together. Awesome. High five. Next guy. Oh, you look good. You. Look... What does it all say together? Is the blue on your shirt the same blue that's on your truck? Eh, it's a little off if they stand by each other. Fix it. Fix it. It's your company. Right? Oh, we can't have a dress code. Those guys would never go for that. What? Of course you can. Of course you will. Of course, every big company or any company that has any type of professionalism has a dress code. The dress code has to be enforced. Make it known, this is what you wear. Every new hire, this is what was worn here. You get to control that. What does your snapshot say about you? What does your gear say about you? Now, I will always say, as so you go back and watch 220 episodes, every time I talk about items or products, I always preface it and say, 
listen, I'm just some dummy with a microphone who sits in front of a cardboard cutout or whatever, right? And yes, I'm a salesman, so take it with a grain of salt. But I've also owned a business for a very long time. And tools and gear are ridiculously important. Because here's the thing, and you know this as much as I do, that every person you do work for thinks it's your tools. They think it's your soap. They think it's your fill-in-the-blank that does this work. Oh, man. When I do my windows, it turns out horrible. What kind of squeegee is that? Well, where do you get... They think it's the tools every time. Because they don't understand that it could be just skill. Right? So what happens is, is if your tools are garbage, and you're like, ah, it still works, but I saw a picture online. By the way, high five to whoever it was. But they posted a picture of a channel, and the channel edges were so notched from, like, window sills and frames. I mean, I had to been using that thing for 10, 10 years. A channel. 10 years. Looks awful. <laughs> Change it. I know that it looks, you know, for us it's cool, and, and it's one of those things that we kind of, like, you know, gravitate towards, like, you know, personal things. But it looks like crap for everybody else. What does your gear say? If you show up, and this is going to sound really stupid... But I really like the Zero Pure stuff. You guys know that, right? Zero Pure is a water-fed system, RODI system, but it's a stainless steel housing on the system. Guess what I do? I clean and will even polish that stainless steel real quick. I'll run cleaner and uh, polish on there to keep it bright and shiny. Now, that sounds really stupid because you're like, well, it's gear. Uh, yeah, we also do that to ladders. I'll clean off the ladders, like heavy-duty clean them off every year. My gear is going to look clean. It's going to look nice. It's going to look new. If I get a crack in the plastic of a pole, I buy a new pole. If the tip breaks and the guys have to use duct tape for the rest of the day to make it work, that sucks. That ruined what I have. So I have extra pieces just to make sure that that is covered. I don't want my brand to include duct tape. I don't want who I am to include duct tape. Even if it's for one job, just to get through the rest of the day, people will go... That guy had duct tape on his pole. Understand the impressions you can't can't not have them, right? I'll get off subject a little bit, but think about this. Everybody's like, well, yeah, that's maybe what they think, but I'll change their minds. Listen, did Michael Jackson ever do anything wrong or bad? He was accused of a lot of stuff. And he was found, he was not found guilty of any of it. But in your brain, as soon as I said his name, that's what you think of. You can't get past what that is. If somebody thinks you have duct tape on your tools, you will always have duct tape on your tools, even if you show up in a brand new 2022 F-350 Platinum Edition, right? Understand that your gear is a representation of you. If your bucket on a belt looks awful, get a new one. With it, like 20 bucks. If your towels are super stained or ripped, throw them away. Get new towels. This stuff is all super cheap. I'm not telling you to go out there and buy all new gear, which... I do every spring, we do a big buy. Uh, I do it every fall, I do a big buy. And then every single month, I'm buying supplies also. We always have extra stuff. This is when I had my business. I sold my business now. So I still talk like I own it. But I always, always did. Always. This is before I was a salesman. But the reason is, is because gear is a reflection of you. Not only can people work faster, better, more efficiently, but it's a reflection of you. I had a guy one time, and he was an HVAC guy, and he came in with a, um, uh, I don't even know what it was, some kind of tool that was like two gauges, maybe you guys know what the heck it is, two gauges with hoses that test the different fittings and things, and it literally looked like he bought it from uh, Goodwill, like, it was, he came in with this thing, and like, the one piece kind of was off, and he's like, oh man, this thing never works right. I was like, what in the crap am I paying you hundreds and hundreds of dollars and you can't buy new gear? Like, your truck looks nice, your people look nice, but this thing you just brought in, I never hired him again, ever. How do I even know that stupid thing worked? I'm paying him all this money, where is the money going? Reinvest in your company and that is gear. Gear is a translation of what you do, right? It really, really is. Let me know. If you need new gear, tell me. But keep it in mind. Gear is super, super important. And finally, the big question that I really, really, really want answered on the comments if you're on YouTube is what is your USP? 
What is your unique selling proposition? Unique selling point, unique selling whatever. Why does somebody choose you over somebody else? What does your brand tell them? That all goes into who you are. Now, if I know my USP and my brand is on point, I can tell you exactly who we are. I can tell you exactly who I'm going to sell to because the people who want me want this. This is how it is, right? If my unique selling point is we are the only company in the area that is not only fully insured, we have a seven-day rain guarantee, and we also do free gutter cleaning with every window cleaning or something, whatever it is. We are the only company in our area that all of our technicians are star rated by how much training they've gone through. We are the only window cleaning company in the area that has all of those guarantees, including pictured name badges. Uh, we have our own app. We have, you know, on whatever the USP is that makes you absolutely unique. Don't say people hire me because they like me. No, they don't. They like you enough to talk to you now, but if it wasn't you, they'd like somebody else. Understand that wholeheartedly. This is not me telling you that uh, you can't be personable because people really, really like my guys. They really, really like my operations officer. He was still on the field. He was a crew chief too. He would go to places and people would think he owned the, you owned the, no, no, I just worked there. That's who people knew. They didn't know me. Never. I was the one to kind of talk to him on the phone. I'm okay with that because they're going to find somebody they really like. If it's your techs, they're going to really like them. It doesn't have to be you. If it's you right now working those same existing people out, that takes some time. You know, you start working with somebody, they fall in love with that person too, and then you slowly move yourself out. New people aren't going to care. It's not you that's unique. It's not you as an individual telling you. What is your company unique? Why are people buying what you are. You have to understand who you are because the only reason you can sell what you do and who you are is by knowing who you are. It's like you can't just sell to everybody. You have to know who you're selling to. Once you know who you're selling to, you can tailor every message. You can tailor what your brand looks like. You can tailor your prices. You can tailor the specials. You can tailor the sales. You can tailor the EDDMs. If you know who you're selling to, you could sell easier. It's the same thing with, with what you are. When you know who you are, it's easier to sell who you are to everybody else. If you don't know who you are and somebody is trying to get that message or you're trying to sell who you are or your unique selling point or you're trying to get somebody to go, these are people who say, ah, it's price. People only shop on price. Bull. It's because you don't have a brand. It's because people don't know who you are. It's because you can't convey who you are or what you are. If you can't convey that, and you can't give them something to see, to understand, and to find value in, the only thing they have is price. Find out who you are. It's going to be absolutely game-changing without being cliche. Game-changing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and listening. By the way, before you go, go get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. I know you're there, and I know you're like, ah, I'm going to get one eventually. Look at Here's one of the stickers off the sticker sheet. It's the, the Just Say No Windex sticker. You know you got to get them. You want to see? I, I, I don't have all of them uh, sitting. In, these are just a batch that are, are going out. But look at this. Look at We got uh, Street Busters. I mean, Waterfed Bowl. I mean, we got, uh, by the way, the uh, limited edition Gary Maurer sticker. Uh, there you go. Windowcleaner.com. I mean... If you like stickers, which we all do because we're all putting it into all the stuff that we do on the buckets and everything else, go and get the magazine. You're going to get a sticker sheet in every issue, and uh, right now you're actually going to get a six-pack uh, of stickers for free. Go to awcmag.com. Check that out. I am a sales rep for window cleaning. The real reason I make money and the real reason I can even live and exist and why we get to do these videos is because of you people who order from me. The epic cool kids. If you want to be a cool kid, and I know you do, all you have to do, shoot me a text. Be like, Jersey, everything's in my cart. It doesn't cost you a penny extra. My number is 862-312-2026. Every single video, 
uh, that is on YouTube, has my number on it. Call the main line, ask for Jersey. That's fine. Either way, I want to put in every order, big or small. Don't forget about me. I'm here for you. So definitely do that. Uh, if you're watching this also, I will be at the uh, huge convention here coming up a week after this comes out. Uh, so check me out. There's going to be a giveaway also. All you got to do is take a picture with me, post it online, and uh, we're giving away some awesome, awesome stuff for that. So definitely do that. Um, and uh, other than that, go out there, find out who you are. More importantly, go out there and be epic.